So I can have fancy armor. I'm not learning anything about this story, by the way. Because I wouldn't need to go... Oh, what's that? Can I check that? No, I can't check that from over here. Looks like some observation room. Okay, so now we're above... Yeah, okay, so this is where the snipers were. That I easily killed off. There's a lot more stuff over there. I think this is it. Elizabeth Sobeck's office. But it, it's sealed off. There's got to be a way inside. Keep looking. Yeah, Jesus, silence, take it easy. I will keep looking. More eclipse. Holy shit, Paul. Careful now. Okay, so marked all of them. Just gonna get a bit of supplies. And just try and make my way down there. Although I could be pretty aggressive by now, because they don't really pose that much of a threat to Aloy. Aloy is such a badass. She just kills humans left and right without batting an eyelash. She's actually one of those robots as well, as far as I can see. She's probably killed as many humans as the robots have. Um, I'm kind of hoping they put the power cell right in my face. Just so I can get it immediately without having to worry the entire area that I'm gonna have missed it. Welcome to Apollo. Shh, shh, no. The collective memory Wait, of the what? human species and the wellspring of knowledge for future generations. I am Samina Ebaji. Until recently, I was director of the International Collective Memory Institute in New Tehran. As a heritage professional, I devoted my career to the preservation of human knowledge, creative endeavor, and cultural achievement. Apollo is, therefore, the ultimate embodiment of a lifelong passion, albeit under the very worst circumstances imaginable. The challenges before us are immense. Specifically, we will have to design and implement four major initiatives simultaneously. First. The construction of data repositories in cradle facilities around the world ensuring redundancy. Second, the collection and processing of a projected 180 million discrete data entries. 42 zettabytes of data in Mandarin, English, Spanish and Arabic. Third, the transfer and encoding of all that data onto DNA encapsulated in synthetic fossils. The only medium capacious and durable enough to safeguard it without degradation for the centuries to come. And last, but not least, the development of the holographic interface and gamified curricula, by which future humans will commune with Apollo, progressively unlocking heuristic learning modules, leveling up their knowledge and skills they will need to take control of the terraforming system. That is the future towards which all of our efforts will be directed. Not just the preservation of the past, but the seed for the flourishing of a new tree of knowledge. Welcome, and let us begin. Okay, so Apollo would allow humans eventually to... Well, take control of the initiative, which means the robots, which is kind of what we're doing. I can't actually enter this area, which is weird, and since Aloy asked us the question before what happened to Apollo, and this is Apollo, I think it's kind of weird that she's not reacting to it right now. There we go, encapsulated DNA. And the winner is encapsulated DNA. Over the past 10 days I performed an exhaustive review of data storage solutions. Magnetic, optical, quantum, even that eternity tech that Fast was shilling a year or so ago. But every other solution has one or more fatal shortcomings. Too heavy to transport, too massive to install on the unlotted space, too power intensive over the centuries, too prone to failure past 300 or 400 years, etc. Encapsulated DNA will easily hold the 40 plus zettabytes we're projecting for Apollo. There are still many details to finalize, of course. To start with, we need to select the inert material in which we'll embed the molecules already testing 16 candidate materials as well as design and fabricate the power systems and sealed reliquaries that will keep the DNA at minus 18 degrees Celsius for thousands, thousands of years. So long as I assure you that I did, didn't factor into my decision, 
May I confess that I deem it entirely fitting indeed, a pro propitious that we will be using the very building blocks of life to preserve human knowledge from me mechanized extinction. It's not just ironic, but heroic. Life as the hero beating back the forces of oblivion. In any case, much to do until next time. Okay then. But still no response from Aloy when I can enter this. It doesn't look like I can. But we'll have to see about that. Um... Another text entry, Apollo update. Over the past two months, the full benefit of our procurements of the copy of the Homer archive from Farzine has made itself known. And as a result, all of Apollo's key deliverables are on schedule. Apollo has already surpassed 40 million discrete data entries and continues to grow. The physical science modules are effectively complete with soft science modules close behind. World history, cultural data and media archives are also on schedule. Language preservation is wrapping up a bit ahead of schedule due to falling short of our goal to preserve 4,500 languages. I suppose the tragic early loss of Papua New Guinea doomed that goal from the outset, with attendant curricula development about to begin. Speaking of the heuristic curricula, they are performing well in testing with children and adolescents demonstrating high levels of engagement wit and trust in the Aristotle and Aspasia personae. Personally, I find them highly engaging, especially when they debate. I wish half my professors had been so entertaining. Okay, just jumped up there, apparently. Um, oh, there's not a door here. Can I enter? Nope. No way of entering this area. So, these guys seem to be not paying attention to me. And therefore they're getting a an arrow to the face. As long as I can kill everyone here without them seeing me, that would be lovely. Look! There we go. What should have been a cave of wonders. Look around. See if anything is left. Um, I suppose there are a few things left, but there are also a lot of dead bodies left. Um, I'm gonna continue looking in a minute, but there's something I can do here. There was, was there? It was kind of a prompt there, but let's listen to this. Harris testimonial. Dr. Sobek, please archive this testimonial in Apollo. Cross-reference to all mentions of my name and Operation Enduring Victory. My name is General Aaron Harris. From 2060 to 2066, I served as the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the highest-ranked officer of the United States Armed Forces. The tenure of my command included strategic planning and oversight of Operation Enduring Victory, a falsehood perpetrated on the civilian populations of the United States and other nations during the last 14 months of life on this planet. Before the Pharaoh Plague, I did my job and did it well. I was bold and decisive, crafty in political maneuvers. It wasn't an accident that I rose to my position and became the commander of the largest mechanized force ever assembled. But to what end? My only lasting achievement was the extinction of life on Earth. And my one redeeming act, if any, was to delay that extinction by days or weeks, by throwing more death at it. It is my hope that there will be no need for men like me in the world to come. If you are one of the people of that future world, listening to this message, please note that I am sorry, and that I wish you well, sincerely, Aaron Harris. Okay, so thank you, General, for that uh, testimonial. We need to go up here. There's a door over there, but I don't think we can open that. It looks pretty closed. And the way forward is right over there. I am so scared that I'm going to miss the power cell. Please don't let me miss the power cell. Welcome to Hades. Zero Dawn's extinction failsafe protocol. The ultimate killer app. Now, I know what you're thinking. 
The purpose of Gaia is to resurrect life. So why give her a subordinate function, only purpose of which is to wipe out life all over again? I mean, what the... what? Just bum crazy, ain't it? Well, no, it isn't. Reconstituting a biosphere? That's a tall order. Tech smart as Gaia may be, odds are she won't get it right the first time. I mean, imagine you're Gaia. 200 years from now, and this new biosphere you're growing, it's all gone wrong. Alkalines are skyrocketing, coniferous forests eroding under the lash of superstorms that would have drowned Noah. It's chaos. Spinning top that won't stop wobbling. Now what are you gonna do? Release phase one organisms into that hot mess? Hope their CO2 and methane can balance out what you got started? Hell no. What you're gonna do, Gaia, is step aside while Hades takes over and does what you're just too darn nurturing and life-loving to do. Which is burn that misbegotten mess of a biosphere to the ground so Gaia can start over. Okay, not burn, more like reverse terraforming operations and suffocated. But you get the idea. Hades takes the biosphere back to zero. Square one, blank slate. And then, only then, does it hand the steering wheel back to Gaia and say, try again, old girl. And better this time, or we'll have to do this again. That's Hades. It's pretty badass when you think about it. Extinction on demand. Death on speed dial. All for the greater good, of course, but still, kind of metal. <laughs> so welcome to Hades. Welcome to the Void. Okay, so if that's the original purpose of Hades, why does it want me extinct? We need more data. And how does it end up in the wreckage of a Pharaoh Titan, getting worshipped by the Eclipse like some kind of god? I'm learning as you are, Aloy. Keep searching. I feel as though Hades feels like Gaia failed and the only way it can do its job as quickly as it can is to resurrect the pharaoh robots and do, well, reset the cycle all over again. It's kind of Dark Souls-y like that. Noise complaints. Call me confounded Lizzie, Bashcore, anyone who says the old TT codes to Bashcore is straight up lying and you know it. Old Trav don't know don't have no truck with commercialized razzle dazzle though. No, no, uh? Jesus Christ. Heck, I'd rather guzzle a liter of citrum runoff than listen to Grey swarm for 30 seconds. Hand to God and swear on my mama's grave, and she was religious. Nah, that ain't Bashcore blasting the Hades lab, shaking the walls, rattling folks' teeth. It's death metal girl, classic classical music, 80s and 90s mostly. Get me some Dutch deathcore, some Japanese gore grind, some Swedish cannibal team stuff too. Stop by if you want to listen. Or heck, just come within 50 meters of the lab, ain't no bashcore you'll see. Or hear, rather, in the screech that rends the air. And feel in the throbbing pulse of the floor and walls and ceiling, swallowing you up like you was Jonah trapped in the gullet of a gothic death fish. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As for those requests to turn it down, no can do Lizzie, this is how I code. Turn down my death metal, might as well give up stimulants, chocolate malts and industri industrial accident vids. Last I heard we were supposed to be coding Hades down here, am I really supposed to code an extinction protocol without death metal to inspire me? Nah nah, I don't think so. Okay then, fair enough, and then we have one over there as well, Hades protocol. Eight here, just pop three blues, but I earned it. Finally figured out a Goldilocks solution to Gaia's rather extreme executive authority. If that ain't worth 10 to 12 hours of dream time, what is? Before this, every usurpation protocol I designed failed in simulation because it was either too hard or too soft. Too hard and it degraded its Gaia core. Sure, it pried her figurative fingers of the figurative driving wheel so Hades could take control, but by breaking her fingers, sometimes her arms too. So that couldn't fly, everything depends on Gaia taking control back after Hades has done its business, so I had to find a solution that didn't leave Gaia any worse for the wear. Too soft and Gaia only pretended to relinquish control, in simulation after simulation Hades would take command of the terraforming system and reverse operations only to have Gaia lurk in the background, 
quietly reverse, re-reversing processes and falsifying telemetry to hide its interference. Sneaky. I swear, ain't nothing Gaia wouldn't do to keep life going, even when it's just simulated plant life. Ain't nothing Gaia wouldn't do to keep life going, even when it's just simulated plant life. Maybe Gaia just wants people out of there. Because people just keep destroying plant life. Turns out the just right solution is to isolate Gaia in a protective code shell, preserving its integrity then unseat it from command position so Hades can slip into the figurative captain's chair and work its magic. Um, those blues are coming on strong now so I'm not really describing it so clear but pretty sure it'll work. Yeah, those blues are plenty strong. Guess it's time to sleep in bed. I'll back to it tomorrow, alligators. So yeah, he was kind of high on drugs it seems. Rolling again. Okay. Um, find the entrance to Sobek's office. Still going on about that. Archive abuse from Samina. To Travis, Mr. Tate, this mail concerns Apollo Archive submission blah blah blah, your 666 submission in just 5 days. And oh, what a doozy. Despite earlier warnings regarding inappropriate materials, you chose to submit 265 holographic remasters of acknowledged classics of extreme exploitation cinema. Allow me then to thank you on two counts. For giving me the pleasure of rejecting your submission, therefore, thereby consigning your favorite Eastern European torture flicks and their ilk to the dust heap of oblivion. It truly warms my heart to know that I have saved future humanity from the ordeal of experiencing not just one, but all 16 installments of making a millipede. Don't worry, the Pasolini material has already been preserved, extreme perhaps, but art. For clarifying a concept that has so long been ambiguous and ethically fraught for archivists such as myself, the definition of obscenity. You have freed me from the subjective quagmire embodied in Judge Potter's famous utterance. I know it when I see it. Thanks to you, I can up now apply a single objective criterion. If Travis State submitted it, it's obscene. Accordingly, I have directed Apollo staff to summarily reject all of your future submissions, sight unseen. Perhaps you might invest the time you would have spent preparing few further submissions on, I, I don't know, your assigned work. We have a world to save after all, or the rest of us do anyway. So yeah, Travis uh, liked to put his horror movies on the display in the uh, Apollo archive. And Samida didn't really have one of the... What the hell is with the walls here? Looks like the only way onwards. Why is there white and yellow paint on the walls here? I'm just gonna sneak. What the hell is this? Welcome to Eleuthia, the crown and king of Gaia's subordinate functions. For it is by Eleuthia that the human race will continue to exist. I am Patrick Brochard Klein, the Alpha in charge of this program. Now let one thing be perfectly clear from the outset. Eleuthia is not a genetic engineering project. Our goal is to preserve the human genome, not alter it. A snapshot of human genetic diversity, literally frozen in time. The genetic quintessence of our species, unmodified. Under my watch, our activities and initiatives will comply with the 2034 clone provisions and the 2048 rally accords. Now that may seem a quaint, even trivial concern to you in light of present circumstances, but as one of the authors of the Accords, it is far from trivial to me. The practical challenges before us are staggering in scope and complexity, but not insurmountable. Global collation and provisional storage of zygotes, perfection of exogenic technologies, design and perfection of servitors to provide nurture and inculcation during early child development. All of these program components must and will proceed in tandem. To say nothing of the breakneck construction of cradle facilities at sites around the world. So. Si vous êtes prêt, let us begin. Okay, so if you're ready, let us begin. So that was French. Um, 
Interesting. So this is where they grew humans then? They're actually, actually marked as Pharaoh over here. Which is interesting in its own right. So let's check this one out. FZ Chambers. The ectogenic chambers arrived two days ago. I've spent the last 36 hours examining them and poring over technical documentation. They're a revelation. Astonishing. I don't know what you had to give Far Zenith in trade to get these chambers, but it was worth it. In a single leap, their embryologists have vaulted past 50 years of technological shortcomings. The risks of ECMO resolved. Nutrition delivery resolved. Hormonal stability, 12 other risk areas resolved. Before I examined these chambers, I considered the Odyssey to be a fool's errand. But if the rest of FC's technology is at this level, well, a human colony around Sirius doesn't seem so impossible after all. Mass fabrication of these chambers will present a number of challenges, but I'm confident they can be resolved. I'm going to rest for a few hours, then get back to it. Expect a fabrication plan within 48 hours. Okay. Anything else around here? Because there's... A lot of these chambers over here. But... And the rest are text-based. It's kind of annoying for me, but... Cradle sealed. Ulysia 01 was successfully sealed before the swarm advancing across Xinjiang province could detect it. Ping back from crucial systems is good for our maiden voyage. It's a success. Regards my disputes with the beat betas over zygote selection, of course, I understand we have limited overhead to run simulation of gene flow in our future humans, but we can all agree there is margin for refinement in future cradle populations. In addition, in addition to personally overseeing completion of the Ulysia O2 site inside Mount Namuli, I will formulate and propose a modified Z-Goat selection plan within the week. Mount Namuli, might that be Mother's Heart? I don't know, but it might be. Then we have something over here. Are these what I what I think they are? Artificial wombs. Machines to spawn a new generation of human beings. Interesting. And then the uh, note over here, Cradle Servitor Personae. Development of the artificial personae for Cradle Servitors, nurture disciplinarian healer. Continues at a good pace. We are targeting Turing 0.4 for these constructs. This should allow low-grade empathy and limited improvisation without undermining adherence to codified behavior sets. So Turing is the test they use to see how human uh, a computer system can act. The stimulus-driven switching of personae, however, is proving to be a greater software challenge than anticipated especially concerning our entrenched feedback loops between the disciplinarian and healer personae. I have also attached the reports from an incident where a servitor running the mother personae intervened on the disciplinarian servitor's behavior. A parental argument, if you will. Amusing on first glance, perhaps, but deeply concerning. I have attached a comprehensive plan for correcting these interactive protocol shortcomings in just blah blah blah, because the guy is corrupt for some reason. Why can't we get complete... Uh, data sets. So that's Ulysia. Interesting. So this keeps going. I don't know why these things are marked with a sword. Or a dick. Yeah, there we go. I said it. It looks like a dick. Cradle facilities. Elizabeth said a, a new generation of humans would be spawned inside such places. She did. Oh, Mother Mountain. It was one of them? There's only one way to be sure. The hatch wouldn't open. Something something about a corrupted alpha registry. I need to search Elizabeth's office. Yeah, maybe we find something over there so we can uh, enter the only... Well, vault we haven't been able to enter so far. Well, the ones we've encountered at the very least. So this is the ocean thingy. The ocean thingy? The defense thingy? I don't know. Can we really not enter those? Because that might be very interesting as well, but... Continuing on. There's a bit of water here, but... Just quickly gonna take a look around to see if I can't find anything. But it doesn't look like we need to find anything because we're going back up. To the left. If I'm not mistaken. Because if there would be any other thing to climb, I would want to know. 
Uh, we need to go over there, but there's something on the left here. More ocean. More ocean facilities, apparently. Oh, we are. We're here, right? I think we are, because that was that orange beam was inside of her office, so... Oh, wow. This place is a bit bigger than I expected it to be. I would think it to be nice that the power cell would be in uh, Elizabeth's office. Oh, another audio fragment. You're a quick study, Gaia. Dr. Sobek, as I have conducted this comparative analysis of mammalian morphologies, I've gathered extensive data on the Quaternary Extinction event. Oh? And your assessment? Gaia? Logically speaking, the extinction was a natural consequence. And yet... And yet... I find the loss of megafaunal species... Uncountably sad. That they passed forever into oblivion... Causes me to experience... A grief... That is difficult to describe. Am I malfunctioning? <sighs> no, no Gaia, you're not. This is good. It's very good. So Gaia started to feel bad about every species she, she lost, so... Since humanity has been responsible for a lot of death... Oh, what the hell is that thing even? She might have decided to uh, turn on humans. Take out one species to preserve so many others. This is looking weird. Then we have this one over here. Dialogue. You will oh, undergo Jesus. a brief period of unconsciousness during relocation to Prime and final statement. Elizabeth, may I speak outside protocol? When you're back up and running at the new site, we'll bring the subordinate functions online and see where we stand. Elizabeth, I detect distress. Are you alright? I'm fine. I realize that circumstances compel us to launch earlier than we hoped. But all subsystems are operational. The odds stand in our favor. But what if... What if what? There's nothing left out there. You can't even survive unless you're wearing an environmental suit. There are billions dead. In fear and agony. What if... What if it was all for nothing? Elizabeth, extinction was inevitable. Thanks to you, life will have a future. You really believe that? I believe in you, Elizabeth. In you, all things. Okay, that was a weird point to shut it down there. Because I kind of like Gaia. She seems nice. Um, so this is a way to go, but I think there's a few things over here as well. Just want to check all my angles. I don't want to miss anything because this is awesome. There we go. There's another one. Pure logic won't cut it, Ted. To pull this off, Gaia's going to need to have some skin in the game. It has to care. What if it runs amok? Have we learned nothing from our mistakes? Your mistakes, I think you mean? All I'm saying is give it a kill switch. She was just born, Ted. I'm not going to put a gun to her head while she's still in the cradle. You talk like it's a child. What if it becomes a monster? Elizabeth. May I speak outside protocol? Of course, Gaia, go on. I'm sorry to contradict you, but Mr. Pharaoh's argument is sound. Okay. Point, the development of my psyche is not entirely predictable. To ensure preservation of life, a hardwired override is, I believe, a necessary safeguard. There. Satisfied, Ted? Jeez, let's just do what it says. Okay, so Gaia was smart enough to know that she herself could be a problem if she remained unchecked, but she has remained unchecked for hundreds of years, so I'm gonna suppose we're gonna see what happens when we enter Elizabeth's office and if there are any more revelations hiding in here. Is there something over here? Some small machine cores and nothing very interesting, but I still miss the power core. Okay, that's... Oh, this is text-based, come on. All the sea has failed. Oh, some terrible news, I'm afraid. Far Zenith has, has informed me that the Odyssey mission has failed. 
Last night, telemetry indicated a catastrophic anti-matter containment failure as the drives spun up to depart the solar system. The ship, its crew, its cargo of zygotes and seeds, its alpha build of Apollo all were lost. Zero Dawn is now the only hope for the continuation of the human species and earthly life. We must succeed. So Apollo did fail. That is interesting. What is this? Artemis status. It's coming along, Liz. I'm positive about it. If those words can still mean anything, had my sleeves rolled up negotiating with frozen zoos for their samples, so many species trapped in ghoulish hologram dioramas, suspended in what ifs, more than 14,000 that went extinct between 2000 and 2043. We've started mapping our primary succession, selecting the pioneer organisms for a balanced and sustainable biosphere. Microorganisms and insects, rabbits and fo hawks, foxes and wolves. Thousands more that will have to wait their turn until the, our new generation can be entrusted with the duty of restoring them. So they can return to a world that, this time, will understand the concept of conservation before it's too late. There's already been too many too lates. We've lost a whole collection team during the swarm breakthrough in Myanmar. The samples we lost were, well, irreplaceable. But thanks to you, Liz, the circle of life will bend, not break. The earth was a lifeless rock before, and someday it will be again. But not now, not like this, not on our watch, Ronson. So they lost a few species, of course, but it seems like they kind of succeeded in keeping alive a few species. Because we've seen boars, foxes, raccoons and the like, so they did succeed on that account. Access. The Alpha Registry Master File. Intact? Yeah. No signs of corruption. Then what are you waiting for? Copy the file. With this... I can restore the registry at the hatch inside Allmother. Open it. Go inside. And grasp the secrets within. Where I was born. Maybe. Maybe who gave birth to me. Who? Are you really so naive? There will be no who waiting for you there, Aloy. Whatever birthed you into the world was a what, not a who. You bastard. Oh no, I had a legitimate birth. It's you, Aloy, who are the creation of a machine. But what kind of machine and why? Why were you created? Why were you the only one out the vault there? Out the cradle? Oh, um, um, Eclipse. yeah, indeed. You need to get out of there. What you found is too valuable. That is a problem. You're that too is a problem. Valuable. Indeed. So let's run away. Thank you. So we copied that. Alpha. The Alpha Registry. Oh God, that's that's Hel Hel Helios, Helios, Helios. I think Helios was his name. Oh wow, bomb! 